Hey guys, so it's here bringing you another video. Now, welcome back to Patch Note Breakdown. So it's actually been close to a month since the last Patch Note Breakdown. I actually don't really know why, but Riot literally took a 30-odd day break in near enough, you know, we're in kind of the beginning of the season still, to have a break. So I think this could be a quite lengthy video, a lengthy Patch Note video. And what I would say at the beginning is I'm going to record this, edit it, get it up on the YouTube channel today, and if you appreciate the effort to get it all done for you guys for tomorrow's literal when the patch comes live, please do smash the like video. It really does help out. And please leave a comment what you think of the patches. Like, what do you think? You, you agree? Disagree? Like it? Dislike it? Let me know. So, let's see what Riot says. So, phase one of the Mythic content overhaul is finally here. Keep reading about the Mythic Essence, Mythic Shop, etc. So, mythic content overhaul is obviously the gemstones and all that situation so again you can't re-roll prestige or gems because gemstone skins anymore which kind of sucks but anyway let's get into it so we're getting nerfs to hecarim and trindamir uh hecarim does make sense because hecarim is clearly the best jungler in the game right now um trindamir again I saw on Reddit the other day of like someone saying, what's up with Trindamir? You know, he's a basic champion. Why is he getting banned so much? And honestly, a lot of it is to do with the teleport change. Um, not that directly impacted Trindamir, if that makes sense. It more awakened people to see how strong that champion is. He's been strong for such a long time because he's an absolute stat champion. He's, he's a stat check champ. And because of how strong these the new items are, He's really strong, like genuinely really strong. Yes, he's still very basic. He doesn't really have any mechanics, but his stats are nuts. He, his, he, the amount of damage he can do by just right-clicking is obscene. So I'm not surprised we're seeing nerfs there. We're getting buffs to Azir, Darius, Jax, and Nidley. And we're getting adjustments to Alawi and Rengar. The Rengar ones seem a bit more substantial. I don't actually know what the Alawi ones are. And we're getting new skins of uh, the Battle Bunny range. Oh, God, it's that. So the Battle Bunny range was that hilarious moment that Riot was... I found it funny, at least, that they were like, we need this new mysterious hero to, like, save the planet and Battle Bunny. And I was like, really? <laughs> okay. Um, so Prestige is Battle Cat Jinx. Uh, we're getting Battle Wolf Silas and Battle Bat... Va They're like Power Rangers, maybe? Maybe that's what it's supposed to be. And then the new gemstone skin is Ashen Knight Pike. So just to explain, we'll explain it also a bit later, but there are no, no there's the Hex Tech skin line, which was the gemstone skin line, is gone. They want to make a theme, I believe, each year that the gemstone skins will be. So this year, 2022, all gemstone skins are going to be Ashen Knight. And then in 2023, it will change different gemstone skins i actually think that's a lot better uh these skins by the way will be out on the 31st so of me record uh, uploading it will be tomorrow and here we go so let's get into it so azir incredibly st strong champion incredibly hard to balance again it's what i've always said one of my best examples of why overall win rates mean nothing is azir was the most overpowered champion in league of legends practical history with a 44 overall percent win rate he got nerfed at a 44 percent overall win rate he is now getting a buff so you've always got to be a bit careful with it because if you go a bit too nuts he'll take over completely um so the base stats he's going up so he's going to get more health growth he's also and you know well that's it he's only getting health growth so again in this patch notes what's right have done now is that they're actually showing you what does that mean is health growth is going up well at level 18, he had 2,116 health base, no items. Obviously, he does buy some health items like Riley. But now, base, he's going to have 2,337. So, he's pretty chunky without any items. So that's not bad. Uh, Darius, so our base damage increased. So, it is literally just a base damage. Not crazy buff by any means. Darius does also, you know, he does struggle with falling off sometimes in mid to late game compared to other top lane bruisers. Um, so the minimum true damage, it used to do 100, 200, 300 plus 75% bonus AD. The bonus AD is staying. What is going up is the actual base number. Minimum damage, minimum true is 125 over 100, then 250 to 200, then 375 to 300. He's getting 25 damage per time he levels it maximum 75 more true damage base 
That's not bad, because remember, true damage means more than damage. That is unaffected by, by armor uh, or anything. So that's actually not bad at all. Um, will it bring Darius to the forefront? Not convinced, but we'll see. Hecarim, again, probably the best jungler in the game right now. He's finally getting nerfs. So tank Karim. So that's the point. You built him basically full tank, but you could still murder people. Uh, so tank is taking over pro play again. So we're nerving, nerfing his base damage on some abilities to ensure a fairer play, horse play. So the Q base damage was 60 scaling to 208 with 85% bonus AD. It's now 60 to 180. It is a at maximum, which again, this is a spammable ability pretty much. 208 is now down to 180 and that is it so for a spammable ability a 28 damage hit yeah it's going to impact him especially that he's building kind of tanky he's not building like full ad it will impact him um i still think we'll probably see hecarim because i just think his play style is so good for solo queue nowadays and then there the devastating charge i will say you do a lot of the time see hecarim's building tank but i occasionally see the hecarim who buys a sheen first then will go into the um the chem tank chem tank thing i've literally seen hecarim's nearly one shot people at level three level four with a sheen with his e it's ridiculous so what are they doing to this so the minimum total damage is again going down more later into the game but does get impacted from level two onwards and the minimum total damage so the maximum it can do and obviously that's going to depend on his speed the faster he's going uh, the more damage it can deal so it was, it, you know, that minimum was 55% bonus AD that's staying. It's staying at 100 to 110% bonus AD. But once again, it's going down maximum total damage. So maximum, it was 220 base. It's now only 180. That's a 40 damage nerf. So again, it's just kind of taking off the extra power this champion had without building full damage. So it will impact him more now building full tank he won't be doing as much damage and that's that by the way that's a good thing why is a tank doing that much damage that's a question that we've always asked so that's good that i think we'll still see him it might force hecarims to actually not build full tank it might make them do more damage builds but i still think we'll probably see hecarim i think a lot of junglers like him quite a bit alawi quality of life change on r and several bug fixes i wonder if they fix the bug Remember the bug that we had? We've played Alawi for quite a while. What was it again? Is you didn't get the animation, I believe, on W? It was like an animation bug that did matter quite a lot because the enemy team didn't know what really was going on. But the R updated face me. R leap of faith now casts with Alawi facing towards your cursor, allowing for more favorable tentacle spawn locations. Oh, that's sick. Oh my god, that's huge. Because that's actually a really big deal. So wherever you're aiming your ulti to your cursor, there'll be more tentacles in that area where your cursor is. Therefore, you can choose where to have your tentacles to take the fight to. That's really good. That's a huge change for Alawi. Wow, I like that. And again, I like Alawi. Um, there's a bunch of bug fixes. Um uh will now be visible to nearby enemy champions when cast on frog of war oh okay and then uh, visual indicators have been fixed will now show the correct range of the empowered basic attack spell queuing has been added to w and r so you can now buffer other spells on casting them that's good so all good things that's i like that quite a lot nice nice to see jacks uh, base health increased w base damage increased also so buffs the jacks once again Got to be careful of this champion because he is technically a late game hyperscaling hyper carry, but we'll see. Um, you don't really see a lot of jacks anymore in top. Like since Trindom has become popular, everybody just plays Trind. Uh, base health is going up. So it was 593. It's now 615. That's healthier at level one. And then the base, uh, sorry, the W magic damage is going up 10 at level one. 10 at, it's just going up 10. 10 across the board. But 10 damage at level 1 is quite substantial. If you take W level 1, obviously most of the time you take um, E. But you rank 1 W. That is the difference in top lane of getting a kill or not in a, in a level 2, level 3 trade. So that's not bad at all. Nidalee. Human W cost decreased. E mana cost decreased late and cast range increased. And W Cougar, uh, Cougar W damage increased, uh, radius increased. I will say... 
Nidalee isn't exactly a, po a popular champion nowadays. She's, I would probably deem her a one-trick champ. Uh, you need to specialize in Nidalee if you want to really play a, a, a Nidalee. You need to be really comfortable with all the jumps on, on Cougar form. You need to be, you know, comfortable with throwing the spear, knowing the range of it, knowing the speed of it, so you know when to throw it and hit it correctly. So I don't see this being a big change for League, but for Nidalee players, maybe. So the W mana cost for her, her trap in human form is going down. So it's not as much, which is good. Primal Surge in human form. So that's the heal. Mana cost of it is going down in late game. And the cast range is now going massively up. It's actually uh, getting 50% increased uh, cast range. So that could be the difference of getting that small little heal. Yes, it is a small heal, but a small heal on your AD carry in human form to keep them alive could do that now. That's pretty good. And then Cougar form, the W bounce AoE damage radius is also going up. So it's going to be helping do more AoE, better jungle clear, better team fight if you wanted to team fight on Nidalee. So that is all round good for Nidalee. But again, not going to affect probably the game much, but it is what it is. Rengar. Okay, so our big kitty has finally some big changes coming to his kit. Our goals were to smooth out Rengar's gameplay but keep his current play style and clarify his builds. We're going to keep a close eye on the Q crit damage ratio. Oh God, they go. Oh boy. Okay. Um, so v right now I can just kind of see that Rengar is going to be a bit like Viego. Uh, we also know that Q is no longer applying on plants. Can be painful for seasoned players who use the mechanic to optimize ferocity stacks. But we strongly believe it wasn't healthy to support long term. And I've instead moved that power to more uh, accessible parts of his kit. Okay. So, updated passive. Rengar's a leap. Next leap will grant one ferocity only. Uh, no, they've got rid of that part. Upon losing all ferocity stacks. No, no matter how much ferocity he gains before his next leap. Okay, so he's getting some ferocity on a leap. That's not bad. Uh, Rengar will be able to leap after 0 0.35 seconds in bush or camouflage or center's E consistently rather based on a 0 0.3 to 0 0.45 second timer so they are making it clear it's three, 0 0.35 seconds every single time that you walk in a bush it takes that long you get camouflaged it takes that long that is how long it's taking brand new is rengar now has a ferocity resource bar that indicates how much ferocity he currently has stacks generated by leaps will have a different color so you'll know if you'll gain ferocity on your next leap or not. And then all frosty stacks fall off after 10 seconds out of combat instead of it used to be 8 seconds. You could be in combat as Rengar and your stacks could fall off. They will no longer fall off. You can keep them during combat, active combat, but they will only fall off 10 seconds out of combat. That's a big good change. And then Bone Tooth Necklace Timer is in within three seconds of damaging an NEB champion where it used to be 1.5. So you do a little bit of damage to somebody, they die two seconds later before you would not have got a Bone Tooth Necklace uh, benefit from that. Well, now you will. So that's, again, a big quality of life change for Rengar. Okay, that's all pretty good. Q, new savagery. So Rengar's Q empowered basic attack is now always a critical strike. Okay. Instead of a regular crit strike damage, each 1% crit strike chance increases the empowered attack's damage by 0 0.66, 0 0.99 with infinity edge per... Oh my god, are they really doing that? Rengar's going to be a ban. Uh, updated, Q Salvagery now also applies to basic attacks against towers. And it also, it no, uh, it no longer does plants. So it does towers, but it no longer does plants. So what are they doing here with Rengar? They are making him into a crit champion. They are basically... Hmm, what would you build? Would you build Kraken or would you build... No, you could build Shield Bow. Dude, you could build Shield Bow, Essence Reaver, Infinity Edge, Bloodthirster. Yeah. Oh my god, that would be strong. 
Whoa, I kind of want to play that now. Oh, I might play a Rengar game in the next few days. Oh, that's not going to be healthy, though. If you guys get one shot by Rengar right now and feel kind of bad about it, haha, you're going to get even feel worse about it now, too. Uh, bonus strike uh, updated. Rengar can now throw his E bonus strike instantly with zero cast time during leaps. <laughs> okay. Oh, no. Okay. That was part of the skill of Rengar was to time your bowler perfectly. So when you landed, the cast time was went away and you could instantly go into Q combat. They've got rid of that skill expression, which is kind of weird. Bowler also now grants true, uh, tr true sight and normal vision 150 units around the first enemy hit for two seconds. If you hit an Akali or a Twitch when they're stealthed or an Evelyn, boom, you get true sight of them now. <laughs> okay. And then his ultimate now grants not only true sight, but also normal vision, no, a normal, uh, bleh, normal 100 units around the nearest enemy. Oh, so if enemy are grouping before, you only got true sight of that enemy. Well, now you're getting true sight of that enemy. So again, if the nearest opponent is an Evelyn, you're getting true sight of them. You see an Evelyn, but you also see 100 units, which isn't very big, but you see 100 units around an Evelyn too. Whoa, this doesn't sound healthy. As as an ex-Rengar main, and I know I've not been in the Rengar verse for a long time, so I'm I'm sure there's people going like, oh, there's many better people to talk about this than you, and 100% agree. But as an ex-Rengar main from many, many moons ago, this sounds very strong. Strong enough that I'm very much considering playing a game of Rengar, which I've not done in a very long time. So, damn. You know, there's a reason, by the way, if you're like, Huz was a Rengar main, why do you think my logo is a mechanical lion with like eye, like a mechanical kind of eye thing? It's because it was originally based on Rengar. It's evolved since then. My original logo looked a lot more like Rengar, but it's evolved in becoming the Huzzy Lion. But like, yeah, there's a reason why it's that. It's because of Rengar. Damn. Okay. Uh, Trindamir, good old Trindy Nips. E cooldown reduction per crit decreased and R cooldown increased. Cool. Trinomir is too strong at the highest levels of play. His kit scales too well with ability haste, so we're re uh, readjusting his cooldowns to account for the am uh, higher amounts of ability haste available to him through the items. Now, here's the thing. Riot will probably never say it out loud. Trindomir is not supposed to be a good champion in high-level play. He's not. He's a basic champion. Basic champions should struggle in high levels of play because there's way more counterplay at high levels of play. So when something like a Trindomir is doing well in high level, there's a problem. And that's what's been happening recently. You know, why is Trindamir wasn't a big thing a year or two ago? Because nobody cared. The teleport change made people readjust top lane a bit, going, who's good without teleport? Well, Darius, but he's not very strong. Trindamir, oh my god, Trindamir doesn't need teleport. He just split pushes the whole game. People start playing Trindamir and then realize, oh my god, he's ridiculously strong. Because, and you know, it doesn't make, you know, it makes complete sense. The new items in comparison to the old items are much stronger stat wise. You are much stronger earlier into the game nowadays in League than any time before years ago. So Trindamir, who's supposed to be a late game scaling champion, is strong pretty, pretty quick into the game. You know, he doesn't feel weak in the early game anymore. He doesn't. You know, that's the thing. And he still scales. So the E spinning slash cooldown reduction per crit. So every time, uh, so one second goes down or two seconds against champion. So every time he crits somebody, his, his E cooldown would come off cooldown quicker. Therefore, he can E back on you again. That was kind of the obnoxious thing. And obviously, he builds crit. He's got a crit passive. So now, if you just crit a minion or a monster, you're not getting one second off. You're only getting 0 0.5. And again, if you hit a champion, you're not getting two seconds off. You're getting 1.5. So they're just toning that down, not letting a Trindamir kind of stick to you with, you know, like glue, basically as much as he can right now. And then arguably the bigger nerf is Trindamir's early to mid game ultimate. It's a 20 second nerf at rank one and it's a 10 second nerf at rank two, but it's the same 90 second cooldown at rank three for his ulti. I predict this isn't the last time we're going to see Trindamir in patch notes. I predict they're probably going to do more things about him. That is my prediction, but we'll see if it's true. I do know, by the way, there's a bunch of Trindamir players that are really annoyed with the rise of popularity of him. Because Trindamir was that kind of 
not really taken seriously champion kind of like a master e for many years like you know the people that play him love him they love that kind of just right click split split uh, split push mentality and he never really got banned he was kind of in his own little bubble but now his bubble has merged with a lot of normal top laners he is getting also banned a lot more so a lot of trindamir players are not that happy at the moment because they're not getting the play trend like they're really not again because he used to be more of a one trick champion he's now a generic champion more top laners are playing him so if you know before he was i would say just a one trick champ only trindamir players will play him but now a generic top laner is likely to play trindamir too more one trick trindamirs are having their opponent pick trindamir against them and they're like but that's my trindamir it, that's the problem with the champ becoming popular and that's it so items um so this is the heal nerf that we have spoken about in the past that when riot axis took over uh being whatever he's officially called uh head of balance or head of ranked i don't know uh he said they were they were targeting two specific areas in an investigation one being damage done is the damage in the game too high and in that in that little blog they uh, that they put we it's likely yes it is and the other investigation was healing. Is healing too high? And they are now doing an initial nerf to healing. So this is just round one of it. So many sustain options were added with the introduction of Mythics last year, especially for early game itemization. Yep. Uh, we believe sustain is still a compelling choice for Mythic slots, but these options just give a bit too much bang for your buck as they are today. To, to make trade-offs between sustain and power more significant, we're adjusting some lifesteal choices in a way that better reflects their cost and value. Hopefully you'll see less uh, of those drain tanking plays uh, that can happen uh, when these items are stacked, um, as well as fewer lanes where sustain washes out trades too quickly, which I'll be honest is most lanes in league nowadays. Sustain is too high. You don't get punished that much for getting someone chunked maybe not it maybe mid lane is an exception like if you're playing a mid lane mage there's not really a great healing option for you if you're not a silas um but in top lane everybody sustains in bot lane ad carry everybody sustains in jungle they all sustain like other than really mid every other lane has crazy sustain so let's see what they're going to do about it so immortal shield bow did 10 percent life steal it's eight percent now down two percent i will still by the way add i do think omni vamp was a huge mistake that is probably the biggest that is so much sustain when you're doing that you're not just healing like lifesteal you're only healing for auto attacking omni vamp you're healing for everything you're healing for your auto attacks you're healing from your spells you are healing from everything i think omni vamp was a mistake but anyway uh shield amount is going up in its maximum level 18 and then the mythic passive, so it empowers each of your legendary items. It used to be 5 bonus AD and 50 bonus health. It's now 5 bonus AD and 70 health. So you're getting 2% less lifesteal. Again, there's the all items, by the way, there. But the 2% life, uh, less lifesteal, you're getting a little bit of a better shield the later into the game. And you're getting more health per item you build. That's I, I, that's an okay trade-off. You know, it's not like, you know, 2% life still is a lot. You know, you're going to be sustaining less. But you're also still, you know, it's not like you're not going to sustain at all. You're still going to sustain. Blade of the Rune King, the same, 8%. Vamp Scepter, still the same, 8%. And that is it. Is that all they're doing? Oh, and then also this. This is quite a big one. We'll see it in a sec. I expected more from this, if I'm honest. I didn't mean to click that. I accidentally clicked on Shieldbo. Um, I expected a bit more than that. You know, I, I heard, because I don't like to look up patch notes or anything before I make this video. People are saying, how's they nerfing healing? It's not exactly what I expected. I expected more items than that, because there are more items that, you know, where's Gore Drinker, for example? So, yeah. runes. So they are changing some runes, which are also part of the healing. So this is the healing extended ravenous hunter is gone so ravenous hunter was used on i would i don't know 90 percent of champions that use this tree because it was just that inbuilt sustain this is more of a big deal i will say ravenous hunter going is a lot less sustain for many champions in league without buying an item and it's being i have heard and yeah this apparently is terrible uh by treasure hunter now i, I have heard that nobody is going to take this probably what is it? Gain 70 gold when you claim a bounty hunter stack. 
the bounty is increased by 20 gold for each bounty hunter stack. Oh. Uh, right, okay, so this isn't to confuse people. This is not when someone has a bounty in the game. This is, I believe, maybe I'm wrong. Basically, like all these, uh, these Ravener's uh, runes is you get stats per enemy you kill up to five of killing each member of the enemy team so with ravenous hunter you got the maximum healing for ravenous hunter if you were involved in a kill for all five of the individual enemies on the enemy team what i think this is is each player you kill on the enemy team maximum once so you kill if you're in mid you kill your lane opponent in the mid you're going to get 70 bonus gold on that first kill you've killed your enemy mid you will not get a treasure hunter stack again for that enemy mid but then the next kill you kill the enemy jungler well for that enemy jungler you're gonna get 90 gold because you get the 70 gold base and then you get a 20 gold increase for that kill after you kill the enemy jungler you kill the enemy top laner well instead of getting 90 gold extra for that kill you get 110 extra gold then you kill the ad carry you get 130 bonus extra gold and then your fifth treasure hunter stack you will get 150 bonus gold so for a whole rune if you get all five over the course of the game you're what gonna make what 400 gold roughly ish it's not great you know that if there's no stats obviously you, it's giving you gold to buy items yeah nobody's gonna take that like i don't know maybe if you're an early game snowballing champ but again you wouldn't really want to take this if you are really an early go like if you're a jungler you can take this and your early game snow like a shako maybe but you know some people are, oh dude draven you get so much big payouts well that's the thing draven you're not going to kill the enemy top laner at least in probably what 20 minutes into the game maybe like you're not going to get all the stacks in the early game because you need to be involved in it's like a team fight situation it needs to happen i don't see this rune being really used a lot at all if I have taken it the right way. But yeah, I don't think that's great. Uh, fleet footwork. So healing upon fully energized attack used to get 10 to 100 plus 40% your bonus AD plus 30%. It's going down 10% bonus AD and 10% bonus AP. So just less sustain from your bonus rune, uh, bonus AD and AP. So again, less sustain. And legend bloodline. So uh, lifesteal per legend stack. Uh, used to be 0 0.6 up to 9% lifesteal with the maximum stacks. It's now 0 0.4. So it's a maximum. It's now 6% instead of 9%. So 3% less. But then after reaching your maximum legend stacks, your maximum health increases by 100. So they are giving you more health, but not as much sustain. And that seems to what they've been doing. But yeah, okay. I did expect a bit more, but this is a good start. It's definitely going to mean less sustain for many champions of the game, especially I'd say AD carries. Uh, because these are ad carry items maybe even like you know the the yasuo yone brother brother combo less sustain from them less sustain from uh, viego for example so yeah i think that's a good start but i do think there needs to be a bit more too uh mythic content overhaul so here we go peeps so unfortunately no more re-rolling for me <laughs> um which it, it, i will say it does feel a bit like a kick in the teeth that i have financially supported this game a lot and it has a little a little kind of weird thank you from riot you know when you've done that you own all the skins was yes you can re-roll for the new skins but you can re-roll for the gemstone skins you can re-roll for the prestige skins like how many people have bought every skin in the game for that to be a possibility not many it'll be less than one percent you know it, hardly anybody's done that and that was a nice benefit and they're they're taking that away which it does feel a bit like a kick in the teeth so let's see what they say about it so gemstones and prestige points are combining into a new single new currency that never expires called Mythic Essence. Mythic Essence, ME for short, can be combined, uh, sorry, obtained everywhere gemstones or prestige points were previously earned. You can spend Mythic Essence in Mythic Shop for special skins, accessories, and more. Welcome gift. All players will receive a one-time mission on March 31st that rewards 10 Mythic Essence to celebrate the launch of the new system. The mission will exp expire May the 2nd, so make sure you log in and do the mission before that. All gemstones in player inventories have automatically been converted to a, a 10 Mythic Essence. So 10 Mythic Essence each. 
So I will say on the Huzzy account right now, I believe I have 48 gemstones. So I will, on launch of this system, have straight away 480 gemstone press, uh, mythic essence, plus the 10 mythic essence from the mission. So I'm going to have close to 500 essence straight away. So I'm guessing that one of these skins is going to be, what, the old gemstone skins with 10 gemstones per it's probably going to be 100 essence per skin. So luckily for me, I will still be able to get the next bunch of press, like the, the new Pike skin, even though I can't re-roll for it, I can buy it. You know, the new Jinx skin, I can buy it. I can still buy a lot of these skins because I've had so many uh, gemstones. And that's just the thing. I presume it's 100 essence per skin. It might not be. It might be 50. It might be 10. I actually don't know. Um, we'll see. So prestige points have expired and they, they, they're gone. And the mythic essence drop rates from masterwork chests have been increased to offset the removal of prestige points from chest bundles. So you're, you're getting, if you open masterwork chests, it's more likely you'll get mythic essence drops because you don't get any prestige points. You know, there you go. Uh, mythic shop the new mythic shop features content that rotates on a regular basis, including the return of past prestige skins. And yeah, so here we go. Oh, there you go. Hunt the, the Ashen Knight skin is 100. So Mythic skins and accessories. Mythic skins and accessories in the Mythic shop will rotate every three months, every six patches. New Mythic skins debut at 100 ME, but then will cost 125 in future on vault. So it's less expensive to buy it straight away. It gets more expensive down the line. Legacy Mythic skins that were once purchasable via Gemstones, Hextech, Annie, Soul Sealer, Vein, will also be available in that shop for 100 on the first on Vault. So the first time that they're in the Vault, it's 100 because they, you know, they're the first time you can purchase them with this new system. But then when they go away and then come back, they'll be 125 the next time. And here's what is offering on the first Vault. Okay, so on the first Vault, we're getting Ashen Knight Pike. Ashen Knight Pike, uh, a Chroma is 40, and an Icon, 40. A, uh, an Emote, 525, and then there's Hextech Alley and a Moomoo for 100 each. All These are available all the time. So at all time, you can get the Ward, Ashen, you can get a random Skin Shard, you can get 50 Orange Essence, or you can get 150 Blue. So they are all the time. And these are the first rotation of the Prestige skins. So the Zoe, the Teemo, the Diana, Aurelia, Thresh, and Kaiser. So from patch 12.6 to 12.12, .12, these are available. And after that point, they'll go away and then other ones come back. Interesting enough, because the values, they're 125 each. Prestige, Kaiser's 200 and Thresh is 150. Aurelia's 150. Why are these different? Oh, here, here we go. Prestige skins can only appear in the Mythic shop at least once per year after they're original released. They'll cost 125 ME the first time they're offered in the Mythic shop, 150 time on the second, and 200 if they've been unvaulted three or more times. So you, the, the incentive is to buy it now rather than later. Usually two Prestige skins will be unvaulted at a time and will be available in the Mythic shop for one month two patches however to celebrate the launch of the shop we're un unvaulting six prestige skins that will be available for three months so what they're saying is i think it's a three month rotation but they release two skins per month in that th in that three month rotation okay um so commemorative prestige skins to recognize the higher investment required to obtain prestige skins in 2018 and 19 Players who own these skins before the patch 12.5 will receive additional exclusive 2022 20, editions of these skins. Uh, Chimera and Prestige skins will never be available via shop, loot, or rerolls. The following skins will gradually be distributed to original owners next month. Oh! So as someone that owns all these skins, I am getting the 2022 version of all of these skins. I already own the Prestige version of them, but I'm getting a 2022 version of them. It's a bit weird. <laughs> okay. It's kind of like when they did, if you guys know, the Pack skins. Pack Severe, Pax Jax. They, um, with Severe at least, they made Neo Pack Severe. And if you already, if, if you bought Neo Pack Severe or gotten, no. 
what do they do if you own pack severe you got given neo pack severe for free because you owned the original version that's kind of like what they're doing here it's a bit weird but anyway uh, exclusive mythic and prestige skin debuts to highlight the release of new mythic and prestige skins limited edition loading screen borders and summoner icons can now only be obtained by purchasing the skin in the mythic shop or event token shop during the skin's initial debut period so if you're um i don't know uh corky main let's just say and the, the a brand new prestige corky uh skin is coming out do you want that summoner icon you have to get it in its initial debut when it comes back into the mythic store later it will not be available or you know you can't get it at the same time um, it will be added to the regular loot drops and skin shards reroll pulls without the limited edition loading screen and icon look so you can get it so wait once a mythic or prestige skin is no longer available in these shops it will be added to the regular loot drop and skin shard reroll pulls without the limited edition loading screen ah they've changed this we can still reroll them this is ah they did it oh my god we can do it let's go good on riot this is another change from our original plan of removing mythic and prestige skins from loot drops and re-rolls permanently based on player feedback oh thank you for listening riot this option grants players exclusive content for unlocking skins okay yes riot cool i am with you awesome so what this means is I can still, as someone that owns every skin in the game, I can still re-roll for every brand new Mythic or Prestige skin that comes out as a reward for owning every single skin in the game. But, and this is, I, I agree with Riot, I am fine with this change. I am completely fine with this change. If there's a, a brand new Mythic skin that I love, and I'm like, dude, that's amazing, and I want to play with that, well, I will probably want the exclusive loading screen border and the summoner icon maybe i won't change the summoner icon but i want the loading screen border that comes with if you purchase it officially so if you purchase that skin with your essence when it first come out in the first i don't know three months or whatever it is you will get the, the skin and you will get a limited border in loading screen that you only get if you unlocked it using the mythic essence after the the skin's initial three months, I think, of being out, it then is then available that you can re-roll it. You can eventually re-roll it. Three months or whatever it takes when it's not available in the store, you can then re-roll it using three icons. If you don't own every skin in the game, you still have a chance to re-roll for a prestige. It has happened. You know, it, it has happened. It's very, 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 very low chance, but it has happened. But for someone like me, it's a guarantee because I own every other skin. I will get that mythic. I will get that mythic or prestige skin eventually. But what I will not get is the load screen border. I will not get the summoner icon, the exclusive things that you get for buying it. I am completely fine with this change because 95% of prestige skins I will never play. I never play with because I don't play those champs. But what I like is the skin will be the same in game. I'm just missing out on those kind of like bonuses like a main would want those champions if you main that champion you get the prestige skin you'd want those that's fine as a skin collector i mainly just care about the skins thank you very much riot for listening like genuinely like it takes a lot for a company to listen it does like, so thank you very much that's really cool well done to riot and then the phase two these are just phase one while we're not launching phase two just yet we do have one big update to share the share regarding the showcase and masterwork milestones while these rewards track uh, the tracks that will replace much of what we was offered through prestige points in the past. Uh, we've adjusted our plans to showcase milestones and prestige skins will debut during showcases will be available for purchase in the shop for 125 ME rather than as a final reward of a showcase milestone track. Once the showcase ends, the prestige skin will immediately retire from the mythic shop and become available for rerolls, etc. Um, so yeah, so... Basically, when a skin comes out, it's either 100 or 125 ME, and then after a bunch of time, you can then re-roll for it. Thank God. Rexec Rentals. Uh, uh, unrelated to note, we're removing the ability to activate loot shards to rent champion skins and ward skin for seven days. 
virtually no one used the rental system and many players didn't know it existed true like again that was just not needed but there we go uh, we got some things we got the new skins oh that's honestly made me really happy that we can still re-roll for the prestige skins like that is literally literally a company listening like that's what that is it's a company listening to the player base and i even heard people speak up against this who don't own every skin they're like dude that's just wrong like you should have a little like a little nod a little thank you for owning everything it's crazy to own everything and taking that away was just pretty damn greedy so i am completely fine with this change you know yeah sure i don't get if i'm just going to re-roll for it i don't get the exclusive loading screen and the summer icon but i get the skin so that's good i am fine with that but anyway 40 minute patch note video jesus christ i'll get this edited i'll make the thumbnail i'll get it uploaded and hopefully you guys will enjoy it so if you do like what i'm doing here at huzzy games please do throw a like on it throw throw a comment let me know what you think and if you're not subscribed please do consider getting yourself subscribed so i'll see you guys next time goodbye Call down the reckoning to bring back hope and peace restore our glory to live forever bring down the dark regime i know how to unleash eternal power lead us to order